Hello and welcome to today's lesson. This is, it's going to be a vocabulary lesson and I want to talk to you about some useful phrases if you want to talk about your abilities and that, well, maybe you're good at doing something or perhaps your inability, some things that maybe you need to work on and you need to practice a little more. So, Hello, thank you guys for joining me. Hello, uh, Vicky, Gustav, Rafaela, Takayo, good to see you. Let's, uh, let's move into the first part, and again, just kind of introducing and talking a little bit about the topic. So, there are many, many different ways that you can say you're either good at something or you're not good at it. This is just, these are a couple of ex examples, like he is good at teaching English, or he sucks at teaching English. These are two common ways to express ability or inability. The one thing that I want you to keep in mind as we go through and talk about these phrases, and I would like you to participate and give me some examples, write them in the chat or write them, write them in the comments, is keeping in mind some of the things like grammar. Are we talking about uh, an adjective or like good or a verb like to suck at something? Is it followed by a preposition? Which preposition are you going to use? If the preposition changes, does that change the meaning? And also th small things like, well, is this a phrase that's going to come at the beginning of a statement or even at the end? So these are the things that I'd like to talk to you a little bit about as we go through some of these different phrases. So again, welcome to today's lesson. Um, we're gonna talk about ability and inability, but before we do that, I wanna make one quick little announcement, and that is just letting you know, if you would like to join my speaking course, um, check out the link down in the description. This is a course for intermediate to advanced speakers. It's all about helping you speak confidently, speak clearly, speak naturally. We do, we, we have different topics each week. We learn vocabulary related to the topic. And again, even phrases like, uh, like these phrases today, this is some of the stuff we go over, learning how to use them, practice using them. And of course you can use the code SPEAK20 to get $20 off uh, the course. So let me, I'm gonna throw that in the chat right there, but yeah, check out the link down below in the description if you're interested in joining. So with all of these lessons, as you may or may not know, I like to, to make them more of a quiz lesson. It's more interactive that way. So all I want you to do is to complete the sentence. And we're starting out with phrases to talk about your ability to do something, things that you're good at. So just keep that in mind. So it, as far as helping you determine which phrase uh, we're talking about. So the first one, she has a mm for negotiating. I've given you the meaning, but because we're talking about being good at something, your ability to do something, of course, they're, they're all going to be very similar, but this is a skill or natural ability to do something easily and, and well. So what could you say? I've, I've, I've kind of highlighted the phrase in general and given you the first letter. Excellent. So you guys are rocking <laughs> this first one. Um, Abimbola, Rafaela, Vivek, Vidya. Um, VB7K2, excellent. So yes, you guys are right. She has a knack for negotiating. I'm gonna give you some examples, but right now also if in the chat, in the comments, tell me, practice using these phrases. Tell me something that you have a knack for, a skill or natural ability. You do it easily, you do it well. So here are some examples that um, I'm giving you, you have a knack for something, if I see some good sentences, I'll, I'll read those out. So you could talk about like the first one, I have a knack for falling asleep quickly, something that you can do easily. Or if I were commenting on about somebody else's abilities and say, oh, he has a knack for telling stories. He's just naturally good at doing this. And then the last one, there's one little slight change that I wanted to make you aware of. Uh, she has the knack of being at the wrong place at the wrong time. So you'll notice two things. Instead of 
anak, and using that article, I'm using the definite article the, and following it with the preposition of. I think more often than not, more, more commonly, you're going to hear the phrase used a knack for something. However, and I was trying to find like if it wasn't like a solid rule because you can follow knack with the preposition of. And often when I was looking at example sentences, it comes after the definite article the. So it's like you're talking about a specific thing, the knack of something happening. So keep that in mind, a knack for something or the knack of. I wanted to, to point that out. But I think mo more often than not, you're going to use a knack for something. Um, so let's see. So he said, I have a knack for singing in foreign languages. Excellent. I have a knack for cooking. Good. Um, my partner had a knack for presentation or giving presentations. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, the next one, let's keep moving on. And my, again, I, I hope that some of these phrases are new for you. And as I shown you at the beginning, many people will just say, oh, I'm good at this. He's good at this. She's good at that. Uh, but these are, again, building, getting a little variety, mixing it up a little bit. So he is extremely mm at coding. Once again, we have this word followed by the preposition at. And when you think about that phrase, you're referring to, well, skilled and experienced. And I do think a key word in here is experienced, that you have experience doing this thing. And you could say, well, they are very mm at this thing. And again, the word starts with a P. I haven't seen it <laughs> just yet, but I'll give you a moment and then I'll tell you the answer. And this is a phrase that, again, you're not going to, to use it all the time or probably hear it all the time. But like I said, it's just getting a little bit of that variety, uh, building your vocabulary. That's what it's all about. So the word that we're looking for, he is extremely proficient. You're proficient at coding. And that's why I said I think a key word is experience. Like you have some experience, you're proficient at doing this thing. All right, now I see some good answer. Excellent. Rafaela, Julia, um, Pramisek, nice, excellent. So yeah, we're talking about being proficient at something. Now, with this one, let me give you some examples and again, Feel free, write some example sentences in the chat, in the comments. The idea is just to practice using them in context. So the one thing which you can see right here is that proficient, you may follow it with different prepositions. You could be proficient at something, proficient in something, or proficient with something. And I've given you some examples right here, trying to let you know well when you would use which preposition. So the, the first one, I'm proficient at setting up a tent. Okay. This is something that, yes, I have experience with. I love camping. So I could say, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty proficient at setting up a tent. And, and that's referring to specific things. Okay. Like before in the example, proficient at coding, it's a specific thing. The next sentence, she is proficient in two languages. So proficient in something it is often used with subjects. Uh, you might hear some, oh, I'm, you know, proficient in, well, you might be proficient in English or proficient in math, and you're referring more to a subject. If you want to say you're proficient with something, he's proficient with knives, uh, and I forgot to put a full stop at the end there, I apologize. But in that case, we're talking about tools that you may use, and you're proficient with this tool. In this case, somebody is proficient with knives. So again, this is why prepositions can cause some confusion. You could be proficient at, proficient in, proficient with. I, uh, once again, in my opinion, I would say that probably proficient at is used more often because you're talking about a specific thing that you are skilled at doing or that you have experience um, with this thing. So somebody says, I'm proficient um, 
with computers. Perfect. Nice. Uh, my, I'm proficient at math. Excellent. He is proficient at cooking a plethora of foods. My dad is proficient at gardening. Excellent. So again, it's all about getting that practice. That's what, well, interactive English is all about, especially these lessons right here. So the next one, she is mm at problem solving. This word starts with an A. And again, the blanks, those are missing letters. So I'm telling you right now that this word has one, two, three, four, five letters. She is mm at problem solving. I would even say, again, this phrase is more advanced. It's probably less commonly used than proficient at, but still something you may hear from time to time. And again, I try to give you some of this more advanced vocabulary, hoping that maybe you'll, you'll learn something new. And it refers to having a natural ability to do something that needs skill. So you're talking about something where skill is needed and you have this, this ability. Starts with an A. Does anybody, any, any ideas uh, which word I'm talking about? Which adjective? And yes, excellent. The answer is adept. Saw one, one answer in there. Perfect. She, she is adept at problem solving. And she has this a skill. That's a skill that people need. And you have this natural ability. You are adept at this. Once again, once again please write some sentences. Practice using this phrase in case it's new. I see all these answers now. I don't know if it's because of the delay or just like, oh, yeah, adept. Uh, people writing it down. Perfect. So the way that I wanted to present this a little differently, instead of me just sharing some sentences with you, uh, to really show you how it's used in context, I just put this in quotes, went to news, and took some screenshots of some news headlines using this phrase. To Once again, just to show you that, yeah, you, you may come across this if you're reading a book or reading a news article. So the first one, it says Montreal companies are adept at meeting employee needs. And in this case, they're, they're doing a good job. They have this ability to meet the employee needs. Uh, this is Feb February creature feature. It says foxes are surprisingly adept at, and I'll tell you what the rest of the article title was. They didn't write it down uh, right there, but it was saying that foxes are surprisingly adept at living among uh, human beings. So basically where, where our environment, where people build homes and apartments and they live, that foxes are adept uh, surprisingly adept at living among us and basically with us and close by. Uh, and yes, that's something that they're able to do. And then that final example, I believe this is somebody who plays cricket. They're talking about an athlete, um, Bharat, adept at making a challenging task look easy. So once again, this is a phrase that you're talking about your ability to do something, to do it well, you are adept at uh, this thing. So the, let's, let's keep moving on um, right here. Again, this one I think is a, a, a common one. My, oh, I can see his sentences. I'm not too adept at writing on the chat. Okay, that's fair. Fair enough. Um, but it, it, keep keep writing some of these sentences. Practice using them. That's 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 what I like to see. Like, sorry, I didn't get to too many sentences there. But I want to look at this one because there are other phrases I, I need to get through. My friend is a mm at riding a horse, or you could say at riding horses. Either one. And this is to have an inherent or instinctive ability. Uh, in something. We're talking about this activity. My friend is a mm at riding a horse. And I s see some quick answers with this one. So great job. I think this is a phrase that's more commonly used. So you've probably heard this watching a TV show, movie, perhaps you even use it yourself. Um, Helena, Mina, uh, nice. We're talking about a natural. If you are a natural 
at something, then it's almost like you're you're born with this ability. You just instinctively know how to do something and you could say you are a natural at this thing. Here are some examples and there's one thing that I want to point out at the bottom. So once again, you're going to follow this with the, the preposition at. You are a natural at something, maybe a noun, or you're a natural at doing something. I'm trying to highlight there. Here's He's a natural um, at playing chess. So you could say he's a natural at playing, using that gerund, playing chess, or just say he's a natural at chess. Either one is perfectly okay. The next sentence that I wanted to say is that if, if you're not going to use the preposition, it is common just to say somebody is a natural. But in that case, typically you would talk about that something beforehand. And we already know what the topic is. Like, oh, I've never seen someone play um, so well at chess. He's a natural. And you're making that statement. You don't have to follow it every time with that preposition. With this one, I think it's common to say that somebody is a natural. Another way of using this phrase would be would be to use the adjective natural born. She's a natural born swimmer. So natural born, you would find this uh, phrase before the noun and you would say somebody is a natural born something. So there are different ways that you can use this word and phrase, uh, which I think is useful, it's helpful uh, to understand. So I have people writing some sentences, I'm a natural at helping people. Okay, good, I'm a natural at learning English. Glad to hear that, Lolly. Uh, she's a natural at acting on stage, nice. Rafella, he wants to be a natural at swimming, nice. Then, let me see, I have, I think, one more with these abilities and then we'll talk about inability. So this is, well, you, you see that hyphen in there. They are mm, in the art of deception. We're talking about knowing a lot of something. And I think this does have to do, uh, it's a key word, knowledge. So I've there are two words. I've given you the first letter of each word. And once again, each of those blanks, that is uh, a letter. W what do you think? They are mm, in the art of deception. They know a lot about this thing. And I hopefully that I'm giving you the first letter of both of those words, it makes it a little easier to try to think of the phrase. And with this one, we are going to follow it with the preposition in. You are mm, in something. Good job, um, Gabriel, Julia, Mina, Promizek. Sorry if I mispron can't mispronounce names. Um, Viraj. We're talking about the phrase well-versed. You're well-versed in something. You know a lot about this thing. And it does make me think of well-versed, you have knowledge. So it's not necessarily like talking about like a physical ability, but knowledge and information. Nice, uh, Vicky, Gustav, Lolly, Rafaela, perfect. So I'm, I'm not gonna be able, I'm not gonna read these. I know it's small. Really the point that I wanted to make with this was just highlighting uh, one of the dictionaries that I like to use, um, Cambridge, in order to get, you know, meanings. I think they give simple explanations, but, if you were to scroll down, uh, not just look at the meaning, often they give these examples using the word and they're really citing it from other online articles. And what I've done, I've just highlighted where they have used the word. The only thing I would say is if you're, I think reading these sentences, it does give you a better idea of like the context and how people use it the grammatical structure, which is all very important. Sometimes I feel like the sentences they provide because it is a news article, it may seem a little bit more formal. Uh, but I, I, this is a useful resource, not just learning the meaning, but then trying to look at some sentences and get a feel for how these phrases are used is also very, very important. 
So now we're going to switch gears. And we just talked about ways, phrases that you can use to express your ability, that you're saying you're, you're good at something. Now I want to talk about your, well, inability. If there is something that you, well, it's, <laughs> you need to work on this thing and you need more, maybe you need more practice, but you're expressing that and you're talking about either yourself or maybe you're saying like, well, this other person maybe needs to work on this thing. They're not very good. Um, let, let's look at some of those phrases. So the first one, and I think I've given you a lot of words, so hope maybe this will make this part a little bit easier. Public speaking is not my mm, mm. There's two words missing. Both of them begin with an S. And this is a phrase that I really like if you're talking about, well, a particular skill or ability that a person does not have. Or in this case, not necessarily that they don't have it, but they just need more practice. They need to work on this thing in order to improve. Uh, perhaps that's a little strong saying that uh, you just don't have uh, this ability. And I know some of you who have taken my my Speak Up course, We I think we've talked about this phrase before. Excellent. Takayo, um, Rafaela, Julia, Gabriel. We're, we're talking, the phrase is strong suit. And if you say that something is not your strong suit, it's just, you're just letting somebody know that, okay, this is the thing. I'm not the best at this thing. You could use this in the affirmative, but I, I, I put this under the category of an inability because often I think people will use this phrase in the negative and they're talking about something that they're not good at doing. And you could say, well, it's not really my strong suit. So just because I have it here uh, talking about inability, you, you could hear people use this in the affirmative and say, wow, this is, you know, this is really your strong suit. Like you're really good at this. But often I think people will use this phrase um, talking about something they're not good at. I've given you some examples here all related to learning English just to, to follow up. And the one other thing I point out is this, notice where it is, it's often, it's gonna come uh, really at the end of a statement. So talking about English, like somebody said, well, English grammar is not my strong suit. And it's just something they need to work on and improve. Or phrasal verbs are not my strong suit. I, I've, I feel like a lot of people will tell me this, again, they're, they can be very confusing, they have multiple meanings, and you can say, well, yeah, phrasal verbs, is, they're not my strong suit. Or making small talk in English is not my strong suit. So you're referring to this skill that you, you just need more practice, you need to work on it, you need to get better. And you could say it's not my strong suit. Strong point, I would say point is not really often used if you wanted to, to refer to in this sentence, like you wouldn't really uh, put point at the end there. Um, typically, I think point would be like an argument if somebody's like, well, that's not a very strong point, um, like a, not a strong argument or reason. So, so I mean, uh, the, the idioms are not my strong suit. Calculus is not my strong suit. Geometry is definitely not my strong suit. Um, Lodging a complaint is not uh, my strong suit. Uh, all right, excellent. You guys, those are some great examples. Thank you for, for sharing some sentences. Let's, let's keep sharing some more. <laughs> now, well, let me just read the sentence and then I'll talk about it. American football is not my... Mm. I've only given you one letter at the beginning. There are three words that are missing. And the that first word that's missing, it's the begins with the letter C. Now, I will say what I wanted to mention about this, because in general, we're talking about ability and inability. This is not, this phrase is not necessarily related to your inability to do something. It's more closely associated with your talking about likes and dislikes. So in this case, something that you just don't really care for, that you don't like, I wanted to let you know that at the beginning, and I think I've probably just given away <laughs> much of it there, seeing all these answers. So when something is not like the type of thing that you like, uh, yes, Lali Rafaela, Victor, Takayo, Ashraf, Oleg, um, Vidya, we're talking about, you know, it's not your cup of tea. And I'm sure American football is very popular in the United States, uh, which is where I am from, and I really enjoy it. 
But I know for other people who are not from the U.S., they would say, yeah, it's not really my cup of tea. It's not the thing that I enjoy or like the most. So keep in mind, this is not really associated with a ability or inability, but more likes and dislikes, something you just don't really care for. So here are some examples. Uh, and, and these are actually personal examples. I was trying to think of other things. I was like, why not write some things that are just not my cup of tea? So I would say that horror movies, yeah, they're just not my cup of tea. Not thing, the types of movies that I like to watch the most. Early morning flights are not my cup of tea. I'm not a morning person. I don't like getting up early, going to the airport, checking in, going through all that. It's definitely not my cup of tea. And loud bars and restaurants are not my cup of tea. I think at one point, maybe they were, and it may, maybe I feel like I'm I'm getting older or something. It just, it's just, today it's not my cup of tea. Um, yeah, if it's just too loud, you can't talk, you can't have a conversation, not my cup of tea. Uh, we have some sentences. Summer uh, is not my cup of tea uh, because most of the time it's sweltering hot, yeah. Uh, cooking is not my cup of tea. Watching TV uh, is honestly not my cup of tea. Swimming is not my cup of tea. Great. Excellent. And uh, I hope, again, I imagine you guys are sharing your, your personal feelings about this. And I think that's the easiest way to, to practice. Think about, well, what, how do you feel? What is something that's not your cup of tea? Or in this case, using this other phrase, in which case we are talking about uh, an inability you can see the meaning right there, a small problem or weakness in a person. What would you say? Math has always been my mm, mm, two words. The first one begins with an A and the next one begins with an H. And you may be looking at this and you see that capital A, that is not a mistake. That, that is, that's just part of the phrase. It is a, um, it's a capital, capital letter. So that's not a mistake. Uh, and again, I don't know how you may hear this from time to time. Um, the fact that everybody's kind of thrown those answers in there makes me think, well, okay, maybe people have heard this before. Uh, but it is referring to a weakness. If you want to say that, yeah, you're not really um, good at this thing. So excellent. Yeah, Lolly. Lionel, um, Ashraf. We're talking about the phrase, Irina, Achilles heel. And I, I will point out that you may find Achilles at the end there with an apostrophe, like because it would be, uh, you know, in sense possessive. You may find it without it. I just, I wrote it without it. But in general, this is a phrase that you're, probably going to use more in spoken English and you're probably not going to find yourself writing it that often, but you may or may not find it with an apostrophe at the end of the word. So I'm sure, obviously we all have weaknesses and you can, if you want to tell me, um, what, what is your Achilles heel and write it in the chat or write it in the comments and just practice using the phrase in context. Since it's yes, Thinking about Brad Pitt in the movie Troy, he played the role of Achilles. So just to, to give you some context as to where this phrase comes from, Achilles, um, well-known, uh, well, I don't want to say well-known, but in the, the mythology, I, I think what happened is that Achilles was in the river Styx. Maybe I'm going to get this wrong. I apologize. W was put in the river Styx and then basically was thought to be kind of invincible um, except for uh, his heel. That was the one weakness that he had. And eventually, I think as the story goes, he was killed by an arrow that hit his heel. And you feel free to correct me if that is an inaccurate interpretation. But again, it comes from the, the story and you say something is your Achilles heel, and you would find this typically at the end of a statement. And um, these uh, these are true examples for me. Writing legibly is my Achilles heel. If you were to see my handwriting, 
not good, not very legible. Uh, I'm also not very good at drawing, so I could say, yeah, drawing is my Achilles heel. If I had to do this thing, uh, it is certainly one of uh, my weaknesses. And I would also say, yeah, cooking is my Achilles heel. So those are just some examples. Uh, coding has always been my Achilles heel. When I was at school, physics uh, was my Achilles heel. Math was my Achilles heel. Yeah, I think you could use it a lot um, with a subject. Everyone has an Achilles heel. Absolutely. We all have weaknesses. Um, my Achilles heel is cleaning the house. <laughs> so uh, again, you could say that, well, this is uh, my weakness. This is not my strong suit. This is just another way to express that uh, and say, well, this is, you know, it's my Achilles heel. Uh, this is my weakness. Here's another one. And I'm kind of curious uh, if you guys uh, are going to get this. When it comes to dancing, I have three missing words. Mm, mm, mm. And I've given you the first letter of each word. Maybe I'm giving it away. I don't know. But this is an informal way of, yeah, just saying that you are not good at doing this thing. And really, it, we're, in this context, we're talking about inactivity because the meaning is like you're, you're moving in a very awkward way. So when it comes to dancing, I have what? What would you say? How would you complete that phrase? It's very informal. It's casual. You m may use this in just uh, uh, a general conversation. If you're talking about, uh, well, <clears throat> in this case, not being very good at dancing. So the answer, all right, now, Lolly, Julia, nice, two left feet. So this is a way of expressing, think of what it really means. If somebody has actually you know, two left feet. They're not going to be very coordinated when it comes to dancing or moving. And you could say you have two left feet. I will say more often this phrase is used when talking about dancing, but you could use it when referring to any activity in which somebody is really, they, they really need to use their feet. And you could say they have two left feet if you want to say they're not good. So here, I just give two different examples um, because you could say two left feet or two left hands. Once again, giving you my opinion, I think it's more common that you, you may come across people saying two left feet. But if you want to say somebody's not, you know, there's an activity, you need to use your hands, you could say, oh, they have two left hands. So the first example, he's not very coordinated. I think he has two left feet when it comes to playing soccer, right? And again, soccer, you need to be coordinated. Um, and if you're not, then yeah, maybe you'd have two left feet. Or using the other one, two left hands, she is unable to catch. So when it comes to juggling, she has two left hands. This is an activity, you're using your hands, um, and you could say that someone has two left hands. So it really depends on the, the activity that you're talking about, two left feet, two left hands. I would say it's more common to say two left feet, and often people are going to be referring to, to dancing. Um, if I were trying my hand at skiing, I would surely have two left feet. It's a good example. Skiing, you, you, you need to, you got to use your feet. Um, so with these lessons, my goal is hopefully, hopefully, um, you learned something new today. I want to just put this little review slide up here. I appreciate you guys, uh, again, practicing using these phrases in context. I added that one down there like to say, I, I use those in the last two examples, when it comes to. So you could even use that phrase, fill in an adjective, like to be the best when it comes to this topic or to be terrible when it comes to this activity. So that's another phrase that you could use when talking about ability or inability. And there are others as well. It's not just these, but I wanted to highlight uh, some of these. And again, it's all about building vocabulary, getting a little bit of language variety, which again is something else we try to do throughout my speaking course, 
check out that description if you're interested in joining. And if you did learn something new, please hit that like button because I know, let me see if I can do a little review. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that many of you have a knack for learning languages and you are probably fairly proficient in English. And I know that some of you may think, well, you know, building vocabulary, it's not my strong suit. But again, as you keep doing it and learning it, and not just learning the meaning, but learning how these words are used, I am confident that, you know, at the end of the day, you will be well versed in these different phrases. And you would then go on to tell somebody, well, look, you know, English um, is, is definitely <laughs> my cup of tea, using it in the positive. Uh, and maybe you then talk about something else that you're not good at, and then you could say, well, this is my Achilles heel. It's my weakness. So if you enjoy the lesson, again, please hit that like button. You can check out the link down in the description if you would like to join my speaking course or learn more about it. Thank you very much for joining me today. Lali, Takayo, Vicky, Gustav, um, good to see you. Irina, Sid. Uh, Sam, Giri, the Theory, thanks so much. Trying to throw out, throw out some shout outs. Rafaela, <laughs> I will see you in the next speaking course. Excellent. Um, yeah, that's, that's, about, uh, that's about all I got. Hope you guys uh, have a wonderful day. And of course, I will see you soon for another lesson. So long.